On the 17th of February 2008, 24-year-old Marilyn Bergeron left her parents' home in Quebec, Canada for what she said was a walk and never returned. The police theorized that Marilyn committed suicide. However, strange events leading up to her disappearance have led her family to believe otherwise. A couple of years prior to her disappearance, Marilyn moved to Montreal where she had a job and an apartment. However, in early 2008, she told her parents that she no longer felt safe living on her own, and in February of that year, she abruptly left her apartment and moved back in with her parents. During this period, her family said it was apparent that something was troubling her and she was often tearful, though she would never tell them why she was upset. Shortly after, Marilyn disappeared. On the day of her disappearance, she left her parents' house with her credit card and no other identification. She showed up on CCTV attempting to withdraw money from an ATM 25 kilometers from her house. The CCTV footage shows Marilyn glancing over her shoulder several times, and police believe she may have been looking at a car which was parked behind her. A few hours after being at the ATM, Marilyn purchased a cup of coffee and the staff at the coffee shop said she appeared to be depressed and wanted to leave quickly. There have been no official sightings of Marilyn since, and her credit card was not used again. Two years after her disappearance, a man came forward claiming he had seen Marilyn in the company of a younger man in Francophone community in Ontario. Customers at a restaurant in the local area also claimed to have seen her regularly. The case took another turn last year when a friend of Marilyn's from college came forward with a story from late 2007 when he claimed that he had noticed a change in Marilyn's demeanor and had attempted to find out what was wrong. He asked her if she had been raped or had witnessed a murder, to which she replied that something much worse had happened. He claims to have spent hours trying to get to the bottom of it with her, but felt that she was trying to keep him out of danger and never got the full story. So what do people on here think? Is there a chance Marilyn is still alive somewhere in Canada? Was she taken by a shady character she crossed paths with in Montreal, or did she take her own life? I'm sure you guys have already heard about this case, but a 20-year-old man named Christopher Tompkins disappeared in Ellerslie, a small town roughly 20 miles away from Columbus, in Harris County, Georgia. On January 5th, 2002, Christopher left his house at 8.10 a.m. to work with three other surveyors near Highway 85 in Ellerslie, Georgia. The group of men were working in a line, maybe 50 or so feet away from each other. The group concluded their work and began to walk back to their truck, but when they looked back, Christopher was gone. At about 1 p.m., Christopher was reported missing to the lead surveyor's wife, but Christopher said mother wasn't notified until 4.15 p.m., which is, in my opinion, odd, to say the least. Nearby, one of Christopher's work boots was found, next to a barbed wire fence with a tattered patch of Christopher's jeans dangling on the fence, his tools, and 12 cents in change in the grass next to his boot. Months later, about half a mile from where he initially vanished, a farmer found his second boot near a swamp. The evidence says Christopher was somehow struck with a force so strong, it knocked his change, tools, and boots, and flung him over the fence in nearly half a mile. Some theorize Christopher walked off the job. Some theorize it was a Wendigo or something of the like. And some theorize that he was murdered. What do you guys think? On October 27, 1989, Melanie Melanson, a 14-year-old freshman in high school, went to a party in Woburn, Massachusetts and was never seen again. There were rumors that she had run off to Florida, but police are now investigating more sinister theories with regards to her disappearance. The Party Melanie told her grandmother that she was staying at her friend's house, her next-door neighbor, but didn't mention that there was a party that night. Her friend had to stay back because of curfew, but Melanie still planned to stay over after she was done. 
The party took place off in a wooded area on the outskirts of town that was a popular area for teens and underage drinking. Melanie was the youngest person of about a dozen at the party, and as the night went on, the only girl. Five guys turned to two and it was just Melanie and her best friends, Jean Pertini and Jimmy Tresca at 2 a.m. They all hung out together until Jimmy decided to go home. He offered Melanie a ride to her friend's house where she was supposed to spend the night, but she declines in order to hang out longer with Jean. Jean and Melanie walk from a wooded area near the party towards the main street together, chatting. Jean has a motorcycle but only one helmet so he did not offer Melanie a ride home. Jean took off towards Woburn and said he saw Melanie start walking alone the other direction, opposite of her friend's house. This is the last reported sighting of Melanie. The case against Jimmy and Jean. Here is a mishmash of rumors, circumstantial evidence, gossip, and character evidence against Jimmy and Jean. Take all of this with a grain of salt. Jean and Jimmy both tell conflicting stories and say that the other person was the last to see Melanie. The very same week of Melanie's disappearance, Jimmy's car disappeared. Jimmy says it must have been stolen. There are rumors of Jimmy being seen with a dirty shovel either near the location or at his house, but sources differ. Both had girlfriends who had been at the party who refused to speak to investigators and still haven't to this day. Jimmy's girlfriend was with him the morning after the disappearance. Most sources say that Gene was openly cheating on his girlfriend with Melanie. Jimmy's stepfather is a retired Woborn police officer named Tony Rodriguez, who retired not long after this incident and he moved his family to Florida. In 2011, 37-year-old Gene Pertini was arrested after allegedly pistol whipping two teens during a gas station robbery in Wakefield. Police say Bertini stole $300 and a necklace from one of the teens. After being arrested, Gene Pertini refused DNA testing. The case went to the Massachusetts Supreme Court. Runaway One of the hardest parts of this mystery is that investigators spent a significant portion of time believing that Melanie ran away to Florida on her own volition, and thus missed a crucial time period in looking for her. Melanie didn't have an easy home life with parents who abused substances, and she had ran away in the past to her grandparents' house in a town nearby. She was currently staying there the night of the party. Police now believe Melanie was killed that evening. They also believe that the body has most likely been moved, maybe multiple possible times since her death. Tips 1992 An anonymous telephone caller called police to look for Melanson's body in an area pond. Investigators did search the pond but found no evidence connected to her case. 2009 an anonymous tip to search in the Middlesex Fells in Stoneham reopens the case. September 2009 Excavation of the land behind Industrial Park near the party location. 2010 Another search at the location of the party. 2011 A search of the residence of one of the suspects and a property connected to the woods area. Another search of the party spot. December 2011, dogs give signs of human remains at a McDonald's in Woburn following an anonymous tip. 2012, the anonymous caller directed authorities to search nearby Middlesex Fells Reservation in Stoneham, where he said one of the teens last seen partying with Melanson was spotted later that night, according to the source. The caller identified himself as a former friend of one of the teens at the party that night. Nothing of note was found. July 2012 Dogs detect area of interest in fells but nothing is found. 2015 Investigators searched the backyard of a house that had switched ownership recently. The previous owners had not allowed them to search it. Radar detection showed some clues but after a thorough investigation with dogs, forensic anthropologists, and others, nothing of note was discovered. Some sources say it was Jimmy's father's house during the time of the disappearance. Jordan Holling was last seen on October 16, 2017, leaving a friend's house in Campbell River. 
walking to his nearby home. Jordan Holling is a 17-year-old youth from Campbell River. On Sunday night, he was at a friend's house located on 16th Avenue. He left there on Monday morning between 1 and 2 a.m. to walk a short distance home. He did not arrive home and did not show up for work later that day. Jordan's described as being 5'11 and 145 pounds. He has shaggy brown hair, wears glasses, and was last seen wearing a gray, long-sleeved sweatshirt, black pants, and black and red shoes. We're very concerned for Jordan's well-being, and hope the public can assist us in locating him, said Corporal Vlusok of the Campbell River RCMP. This is out of character for him, and his friends and family are very worried.